Now on Sunrise and streaming on CrossroadsToday.com, we're learning more about the man who was found unconscious in his vehicle Wednesday in Victoria. We have his identity. And police have made another, made another arrest in Tuesday's robbery at a grocery store in Victoria. We'll tell you what we know about his arrest and the charges the man is facing. Turning now to New York, where the former president and his organization are being tried for civil fraud. Trump's son took the stand yesterday in their family and organization's defense. The story and more just minutes away. And we had a couple cold days the last couple days, but we're going to warm it up into the weekend. And next, we're going to take a look at that and the weather coming up. In game last Friday, see what I mean in sports. You're watching 25 News Now Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for joining us. I'm Carolina Astrain. And I'm Parker Cox. And today it's the third day of November 2023. The time is now 631 on our Friday morning and it's National Give Someone a Dollar Day. I know I'm going to give my landlord more than a dollar today because it's rent day. Would you like a dollar, Carolina? I I'll, think I have a dollar in my wallet. I'll take one in quarters if you have it. Oh, I don't have quarters. <laughs> I think a lot of people are moving away from change, but... Oh, I love change. Oh, really? <laughs> Don't change a thing. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but, well, Parker, you... the temperatures are changing Yeah, I'm just about to say that. You got me <laughs> to to it, actually. Well, folks, if y'all woke up with this this morning, it's a little cool out there, but it's not as bad as, no, excuse me, not as, bad as it's been the last couple of days. If you look at that live look at North Victoria where it's right there, where it's a little cloudy out there this morning, but at 59 is that morning temperature this morning. It's not 40s, it's not 30s, so we're slowly warming up. And we are going to be slowing up quite a bit here over the next week. We're going to take a look at that in a moment. Dew point of 52, though, bringing the humidity to a 78% with those winds, six miles an hour, pretty steady out of the east northeast and here's a picture i took yesterday uh, we had a beautiful sun uh, sunrise yesterday morning look at those pretty colors in the sky and the reason you get these colors in the sky you get these sunrises pretty sunrises and sunsets is actually because you get scattering from polluted particles in there so you stuff like carbon dioxide and you know all the other greenhouse gases that are in the air that actually scatters at different wavelengths depending on the size of the molecules so that's why you get these pretty colorful sunrises and sunsets well we're going to take a look at the temperature for the rest of the day we're going to start out in the upper 50s mid 50s here in all of our area and then we'll be warming up into the 70s by this afternoon pretty much mid to high 70s for the majority of our area maybe low 70s up here in the north but then tonight we'll be dropping back to the 50s maybe 60 flat tonight and then back, back up to the 80s tomorrow and high 80s next week we can take a look at that in a moment because here's what's going on this week or weekend and next week we've got this high pressure that's currently sitting out here in the southeast totally dominating southeast in terms of pressure and that's what's giving us all that southeasterly flow out of the gulf giving us those warmer and more humid conditions and area by this weekend and next week and coming up in just a few moments we're going to take a look what those temperatures are, temperatures temperatures are warmer to next week and that's coming up back to you carolina thank you parker police have released the name of the man who was found passed out in his vehicle wednesday with his three-year-old daughter in the back seat the man is 28 year old dallas lopper police say lopper was found unconscious in his vehicle at the corner of camellia and mockingbird lopper was arrested and charged with driving while intoxicated with a child and child endangerment Police have arrested a fourth man in connection to Tuesday's robbery at a grocery store in Victoria. 25-year-old Latravion McNeil is their latest arrest in the case. McNeil was picked up at a house in the 600 block of Timberline Drive. He faces charges of aggravated robbery, engaging in organized criminal activity, and two counts of tampering or fabricating physical evidence. McNeil is in the Victoria County Jail with a bond set at $150,000. Three other men also charged in this robbery. The civil fraud trial in New York against former President Donald Trump, along with members of his family, continued Thursday. Both Donald Jr. and Eric Trump took to the stand in the $250 million civil fraud trial against the former president's family and their company. It's the second day of Donald Trump Jr. on the stand while his brother Eric made his first appearance. Both Trumps faced questions about their role in the Trump Organization as it related to the financial statements that were were reportedly inflated to benefit the company. Eric Trump is expected back on the stand Friday with Donald Trump and his daughter Ivanka expected to take the stand sometime next week. Continuing coverage in New York this morning and a massive explosion ripping through a suburban neighborhood. State emergency crews responding amid fears of a total collapse. Overnight, authorities were expected to tear down what's left of this building in New York after a gas explosion leveled a row of homes, injuring at least 15 people. It was an extremely substantial explosion, extremely substantial. 
five of the injured people are first responders. Police say most of the other 10 victims, including two children, are in critical condition. The members of service, the police and fire that were injured are not life threatening. Officials in Wappingers Falls, north of New York City, say the structure that collapsed was a multifamily building with four apartments. Before the explosion, a utility crew was performing what's described as routine maintenance when the excavator apparently hit a three-quarter inch gas line. There was an explosion which we actually felt at the police station um, and was felt throughout the entire village. Marcy Ward was home with her children down the street. Uh, well, I was home. I was making lunch for the kids, and all of a sudden the house shook. Police say they do not believe the explosion was criminal, but the investigation is ongoing. Lionel Moyes, ABC News, New York. It's tiny. The blast was so serious, New York's governor deployed state emergency services. The Texas Rangers are back in, back home after winning the first World Series in the franchise's 63 season history. The team charter flight arrived at Love Field late Thursday afternoon and was greeted with a celebratory shower from two fire trucks. The second baseman emerged from the plane holding the commissioner's trophy as the players headed for the team's buses. And the Rangers close out the season by beating the Arizona Diamondbacks 5 to nothing in Game 5 on Wednesday. A World Series victory parade is planned today in Arlington. And that leads us to your viewer poll. You can scan the QR code on your screen to take part. We ask you, did you root for the Texas Rangers this season? Okay, let's take a look. 68% of you say yes, you did. And 32% of you say no, you did not. We want to keep hearing from you all. Come to crossroadstoday.com slash vote to take part in our viewer poll. And remember to subscribe to, the, to our YouTube channel, Crossroads Today. Hit the like button and click the notification bell. The time is now 6.37 on our Friday morning. Here's a look at what's coming up well, on 25 News Now Sunrise. An Austin County businessman says he'll challenge Stan Kitzman for the House District 85 seat in the upcoming March primary. As the Israel-Hamas war intensifies, Secretary of State Antony Blinken arriving in Israel for talks with leaders as the White House calls for humanitarian pauses to allow in aid to Gaza and facilitate the releases of hostages and civilians. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. That story ahead. And coming up right after the break, we're going to take a look at that school bus forecast and that pollen report. And coming up later, we're going to take another look at that fishing forecast and your football forecast. Now it's coming right up. Here's a look at what's coming up on Community Crossroads this week. We hear from Victoria Preservation, the Victoria ISD, we learn about the Marine Corps ball, and we also hear from the City of Victoria Municipal Court Judge Vanessa Heinold. I feel like people <laughs> come to my courtroom and they're nervous all the time. Uh, they're, they're uneasy and, and uh, maybe there's this element of intimidation that happens, um, but I really try my very hardest to put people at ease. Well, good morning, good morning, Crossroads. If you're all waking up with us this morning, or if you're just tuning in, look at a live look of Quay right there, where it's a little cloudy out there, but a little cool as well, and not as cold as the last couple days. Of course, we're in the 30s and 40s, no. No, we're not, we're in the 50s right now, 58 degrees that morning temperature right now, with the dew point of 52, bringing that humidity to an 81%, and there's a bunch of pretty calm now, now up there in Quero as well. Now, I put Gonzales up there, because uh, uh, Gonzales is the closest town to Quero that isn't Victoria, because it's a little bit farther north, so you get a little bit different weather up there. Well, if you're seeing our kiddos off to school this morning, about 58 degrees that morning temperature as they're heading out the door, it's with some mostly cloudy skies, so maybe pack them a light jacket or something, because it's gonna warm up quite a bit today into the 70s today, 77 is the afternoon temperature, as they're heading back home in the afternoon, about three, four, 4 p.m. and probably cloudy skies this afternoon. Make it a beautiful, beautiful day to go outside and go enjoy some, some of that beautiful weather. And speaking of beautiful weather, it's going to be even better because there's not really any allergies, uh, allergy pollen today. Got trees and ragweed pollen are low today with that grass pollen is non-existent. And we're going to take a look at that seven day here in the crossroads. Could be warming up quite a bit going into the weekend and especially into next week. Take a look 86 on Tuesday and 88 on Wednesday. Maybe back into those summertime temperatures yet again. We're going to take a look at that and more in just a few more moments. Back to you, Carolina. Thank you, Parker. The athlete of the week could be described in many words, but our sports director, Gino Perez, does his best. At a crossroads, the athlete of the week's game could be described as amazing, fantastic, phenomenal, absurd, dazzling, monumental, and I could go on. But instead, let's hear from the Division I commit about the game himself. 205 pound running back from Tidehaven gave the Bowling Bulldogs something to be scared about heading into the weekend before Halloween, 
by running all over the field and having his best game ever. Joseph Dodd said the game plan was to take it to them and never let up. Uh, it felt good. I mean, that's probably like my first actual breakout game. Uh, most of the games I'll probably play like one half because we'll probably be up high. But, I mean, it felt great. I needed that. <laughs> Dodds had the biggest game of his career, rushing for 323 yards on 26 carries and an astronomical seven touchdowns. His goal is to reach 2,000 yards this season, and he's halfway there. But keep in mind that he normally plays only half the game since his team is so dominant. This was the easiest athlete of the week of the season, with Joseph Dodds having seven touchdowns and 323 yards. That's your 25 Sports Now. Thank you, Gino. All right, we want to invite you all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. Just search Crossroads Today Plus. Turning to the escalating conflict in the Middle East, the fighting between Israeli forces and Hamas militants is intensifying in the air and on the ground. The death toll on both sides now topping 9,000 as the U.S. calls on Israel to allow more aid into Gaza as the humanitarian crisis there worsens. This morning, Israeli troops pressing deeper into North Gaza. The Israeli Defense Forces says its ground operation is expanding, reporting its troops have completely encircled Gaza City and are locked in face-to-face -face battles with Hamas militants. Israel intensifying air assaults on Hamas targets across Gaza, demolishing densely populated areas. Civilian survivors, including children, rescued from the rubble. The Biden administration calling for humanitarian pauses to allow more aid inside Gaza. We do not support a ceasefire and that that gives time for Hamas to regroup, uh, which is uh, something that again would put uh, Israeli citizens uh, and others in danger. A senior U.S. official telling ABC News the U.S. is also flying unarmed MQ-9 Reaper drones over Gaza to assist Israel with locating more than 200 hostages Hamas is holding captive. Secretary of State Antony Blinken said for more meetings with top Israeli leaders today. We will focus as well on steps that need to be taken uh, to protect civilians who are in a crossfire of, of Hamas's making. At the South Gaza-Egypt border, the White House says 74 Americans and their families were among hundreds of foreign nationals to enter Egypt through the Rafah border crossing in recent days. American Maha Albana, an aid worker from New Jersey, now safe and well in Cairo, speaking to our Maggie Ruley. I have PTSD. I've been through a lot. I've, if I hear like a loud noise, I jump. I had a panic attack. It's unbearable. So you can't really escape it. On Capitol Hill, a House Republican majority passed a $14 billion Israel aid package paid for with money earmarked for the IRS. But it also leaves out Ukraine defense funding. That bill likely dead on arrival in the Democrat-led Senate, and the president has vowed a veto. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. An Austin County businessman says he'll challenge Stan Kitzman for the House District 85 seat in the upcoming March primary. The El Campo Leader News reports the owner of Sealy Technical Services, 40-year-old Tim Greeson, works with the design of boats and barges and serves on the Texas A&M Task Force 1, assisting with disaster relief efforts. The time is now 6.45 on your Friday morning. Still to come. Ford has now called back 95% of its labor force following the strike and strike-related layoffs. It's time to celebrate some birthdays. Happy birthday to Paula. Happy belated birthday, Mom, from your children, grandchildren, and great-grandchildren. With love from all your family and fur babies and your husband in heaven, we love you. And happy birthday to Fred. A big happy, happy birthday to my brother, Fred. Hope you have a great day today. Love you lots from your family. Happy birthday to Juana from your family, Antonio, Michelle, and Diana. And happy birthday to Isaiah. We want to wish our son, happy, uh, Isaiah, a happy birthday. Happy 21st birthday today. We love you from mom and dad. Happy birthday to Brandy. Happy 28th birthday to our beautiful daughter, Brandy. You're, you're our little princess forever. May you have a wonderful birthday and may God bless you with many more. Love mom and dad. And happy birthday to the machine, comedian, actor, and podcaster, Bert Kreischer, his 51 today. 
And to see your birthday on Birthday Wish Live on 25 News Now Sunrise, come to CrossroadToday.com. Click on More and under Home, you see KABU to submit your birthday. The time is now 646 on your Friday morning. Happy birthday if you're celebrating one today. Yes, happy birthday. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Well, good morning. Good morning, Crossroads. If you're waking up this morning, it's a little cool, but it's not as cold as the last few days, but it's going to be a nice weekend this weekend. It'll be heating up quite a bit going into the weekend and next week. And it's good, maybe a good day to go outside. And actually leads us to our weather poll this morning. Today's weather poll asks you, will you be going out to enjoy the weather this week? And let's take a look at what y'all are saying. Oh, look at that. It changed again. 91% of y'all are now saying, yes, you will be going outside to enjoy that beautiful weather. And 9% of y'all are saying, no, you will not. Maybe you're going to catch up on some movies that you missed on Halloween or something like that. To vote on today's weather poll, go to crossroadtoday.com slash vote weather and see what everybody else is saying as well. well. Like I said, we're going to be warming up a little bit going into the weekend and next week as you take a look at what's going on here in the country. We've got this high pressure, deep high pressure. Actually, it's currently dominating, uh, not as deep, but especially it's not as deep as the next one's coming. High pressure dominating the southeast coast right now. That's actually lining up perfectly with this low that's developing in the southeastern Rockies. It's going to actually intensify the southern, uh, southeasterly winds out of the Gulf into our area by this weekend into next week, giving us this warm and humid conditions for a while as we take a look there's going to be another high pressure that's going to enter enforcing those high high temperatures as well for quite a while so take a look at those temperatures for today starting out in the 50s in the morning but we're going to warm up into the 70s maybe high 70s this afternoon dropping back into the 50s maybe 60 tonight and then back into the 80s tomorrow making a great day to go out and watch that football let's take a look at your football forecast because it's football friday game of the week this week is victoria east versus victoria west at memorial stadium and the kick talk kickoff time is about 7 30 with about 70 degrees but partly cloudy skies and winds light 5 to 10 miles an hour out of southwest. Coming, look a bit, coming up in a little bit, we're going to take a look at those warmer temperatures and a few other things as well. Back to you, Carolina. Thank you, Parker. Ford has now called back 95% of its labor force following the strike and strike-related layoffs. Even as workers return to plants impacted by the UAW strike, Ford estimates that it will take weeks to ramp back up to full production. This as UAW members begin to vote on ratifying tentative agreements with the big three automakers. UAW members at Ford's Michigan assembly plant have already voted to ratify their new contract with the company. The UAW says all three offers from Ford, GM and Stellantis include 25% base wage increases through April 2028, cost of living allowances and better retirement benefits. Prescriptions for weight loss and diabetes drugs are rising across the U.S. and it is causing a huge boost in sales for two pharmaceutical companies. On Thursday, Novo Nordisk, the company behind Ozempic and Wegovi, reported a 29% increase in sales to $8.4 billion for the third quarter. Eli Lilly, the maker between the diabetes drug Monjaro, reported a 37% increase to $9.5 billion during the same period. Both Ozempic and Monjaro are injectable prescription medications intended for adults with diabetes. Although both are often prescribed for weight loss, Wegovy is used as an obesity treatment. While the injected medicines were proven effective for weight loss, one study suggests that people taking the drugs may be at a higher risk for serious digestive problems. Still to come on Sunrise News to know before you go, we took a look at early voting in Victoria County. This constitutional amendment election proposition 13 would increase the mandatory age of retirement for state justices and judges. The mandatory retirement age for state justices and judges would rise from 75 to 79 and it would also increase the minimum age to retire from 70 to 75. Election day is Tuesday, November 7th. Early voting Victoria for the November 7th election continued Thursday. The numbers from the election administrator look like this. 426 people voted in person early Thursday. 2,231 people have voted early in Victoria County so far. 54 mail-in votes were received Thursday and a total of 433 mail-in votes have been received so far. Early voting continues today from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. You can go to the Dr. Petty Dotson Public Health Center that's at 2805 North Navarro. Five freshman football players in Oregon are in police custody after a two-week investigation into allegations of harassment and assault. The students were arrested by Kaiser Police Thursday. The police department says the crimes took place between August and October in the boys' locker room. 
all four victims were fellow freshman football players. The students were processed at the Kaiser Police Department and taken to the Marion County Juvenile Department where they were released to intake staff. The district canceled freshman football activities for safety reasons and then collaborated with authorities to investigate the allegations. Former President Donald Trump has filed an emergency motion regarding a gag order imposed on him in his D.C. election interference case. The former president filed a motion asking the U.S. Court of Appeals for the D.C. Circuit to immediately enter an administrative stay pausing the gag order and for a ruling on his motion for a permanent stay by November 10th. Last week, Judge Tanya Chutkin reimposed a narrow gag order barring him from making public comments targeting prosecutors, court staff, and potential witnesses. Chutkin agreed to reinstate the order after prosecutors cited Trump's recent social media comments about his former chief of staff. Two separate judges have now imposed orders mandating that he reign in his speech. Trump has denied any wrongdoing in the case. Gas prices keep falling in Victoria. AAA Texas reports the average gas price per gallon is $2.75 a gallon. That's 15 cents less than a week ago, 58 cents less per gallon than it was a month ago. And across the state, the average price per gallon is $2.91. We want to invite y'all to experience our digital streaming service, Crossroads Today Plus. You can find it on your connected TV through Amazon Fire TV, Roku, Apple TV, and Android TV. Just search Crossroads Today Plus. It's free. And we do have time for a final check of our viewer poll. Today, we asked you, did you root for the Texas Rangers this season? Okay, let's take a look. 57% of you say yes, you did, and 43% of you say no, maybe you were a Houston Astros fan. Thank you for taking part in our viewer poll. And let's go ahead and turn to a Texas Rangers fan. It's Parker with his for with the forecast. <laughs> Thanks, Carolina. Yes, I am a Rangers fan. Go Rangers. But if you're all waking up this this morning, it's a little cool out there, but not as bad as the last few days. We had a 30, 40s range. But we're starting out this morning about 59 here in the crossroads with a dew point of 53, bringing the humidity to an 81%. We're going to be a nice day today, warming up to the 70s today, dropping into the 50s and maybe 60s overnight again, and then back into the 80s tomorrow ahead of next week. And take a look what's going on for the rest of this weekend. Next week, we got that high that's currently, currently really dominating the southeast coast right now with all that pressure. That's actually bringing us all those southerly flow all that southerly flow out of the gulf giving us those warm and humid conditions by this weekend and next week as we take a look at that seven day here we warming up quite a bit into the weekend and next week like i said 86 is in the forecast for tuesday and 88 on wednesday pretty much back to those summertime conditions well as long as we don't go back to highs of 100 i'm i'm okay with the 80s right absolutely <laughs> i'm so excited for those warm temperatures yes i'm gonna get out on my bike all weekend and I hope y'all do too. Thank you for joining us. Have a wonderful start to your beautiful weather weekend. And remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Cross Today. And join us tonight for 25 News Now at 5, 6, and 10.